This is the Museum Archive software project, premium version. I'm going to give you an overview of what the software does. When you open up the application, there's a menu on the left hand side. It's a Outlook style menuing system where you can click on various sections of the menu and bring up various menu choices that you can access. We're going to look at um, how the software operates, how you can use it, and there will be more detailed tutorials on various sections. First thing we're going to look at is the supporting information because without this information you won't be able to do much with the categorizing of objects in your in your archive. So the first thing we're going to do is call up under supporting information the categories. Now categories within the software there's two levels of categories. One is the general category which is you know archaeology or art or audio and those are predefined because we needed to have a structure in the database for each type of object that you might be able to put into the database. But within each of those general categories, you can define an unlimited number of categories, which are actually subcategories. So for instance, under audio, we have in this example sample data, we have a general audio, we have a classic rock audio, and those are the only two we've put in, but you can add another one. To add another one, just insert, and we're going to pick a general category. We'll select audio from the list, and then we're going to give it a name. Let's call it Old Time Radio. So that quickly, we've added another subcategory that you can use for any of the objects. The flexibility of this is that you can segment your the the information in your database in a way that makes a lot of sense to you and the software developer hasn't forced you into any kind of strict categories in addition to the categories the supporting information menu section gives you the opportunity to maintain other information that you'll be using with your objects these include collections locations, sources, staff members, status, names, and geologic gauges. Each one of these buttons will open up a browse window and display the information that you, either you maintain or that came with the software. In this particular example, the geologic gauges, I've already populated the data for you. If you click on the, the uh, display the age tree and expand them all, you'll see that we've uh, given you all of the um, geologic ages that are um, currently being used, at least to the best of our knowledge. But you can maintain all of this information yourself, and that's part of the power of using this particular software package, is that we don't require you to fit into a particular mold. Once you've created all the information in the supporting information menu section, it's time to um, go to the main archive and begin entering some of your objects. So if we click there and go down to the objects in the archive button, it'll open up a browse window containing a view of all of the objects currently in the archive. Now we're going to come back under uh, a different tutorial to show you the w methods that you can use to sort and search through the list of objects because as you can imagine once you have tens or even hundreds of thousands of objects, you're going to want to be able to locate the one that you want to work on as quickly as possible. And the software goes to great lengths to try and give you the tools to help you find those objects quickly and easily. But for now, we're going to just show you the basic concept of entering an object into the archive. So without worrying about where we are in the list, because you don't have to maintain the sort order yourself, we're going to click on the insert button to open up the a new empty uh, object uh, form. And the first thing you'll notice is that uh, at the top there are two pull down boxes. And these are where we're going to pick our category and our, our general category and our category from. So if we drop down the list, you'll see there are the 13 general categories that are built into the software. We needed to build these categories into the software in order to provide you with the forms and data format necessary to record information about these different types of objects. 
but then as we spoke about uh, a few minutes ago you're able to further delineate what these categories are for instance in the audio section if we select audio as a general category the drop down list for the category names includes at this point the general audio classic rock and old time radio you recall that we've just entered old time radio as one of our our choices so if we select that we're now ready to enter an old time radio audio object you'll also notice on this form that some of the fields are um, colored yellow as opposed to white and I did that as sort of a visual indicator that they are required fields so the software is going to stop you from finishing or entering this object until you've actually given it acceptable values in all of the required fields and we'll go into that in more over that in more detail too in a, a future tutorial but you'll see that essentially you can give each object a name a description an accession number which is totally of your control you can devise your own numbering scheme then we're going to get into picking information from the supporting information tables collection is one of the supporting information tables and if for instance if I want to see what collection I want to add this to at this point the sample data has a general collection where most of the objects will belong or a special collection number one you can have as many collections as you need to help you further uh, define what objects belong to what section of your archive so for now we're just going to pick general collection it populates the field for you then you go down the list and you do the same with each of these other fields and when you're done you save the object now I'm going to abandon this one we don't need to uh, to add a new object for the purposes of of this overview so I'll cancel and return to the list and we're going to take a look at one of the objects that was already entered in this case this is an audio object it's the Beatles album Abbey Road we have some basic information set up and you'll notice that once you've saved the basic information about an object you're presented with a, a series of other choices things that you can do with this object across the top you've got images related to the object condition of the object where you can describe what condition it's in on a particular date events appraisals provenance and notes in addition if we go back to the basic information page you've got keywords which are going to enable you to uh, more quickly locate this object at a future date in addition the actual details of this object and this is the part that's related to what category of object you've you've assigned it to if I click on this it opens up an audio object form which would enable you to give more information about the particular object including what tracks are on the audio object and what performers and instruments are related to each track so that's essentially the way you enter objects into the database the software has a bunch of other features that help you find and report on the information that you've added into the database there's a complete search menu over here which will let you search by keyword or by any of the object types there's a report menu which will print either summary or detailed reports and the premium version has a report wizard that will let you design your own reports there's also a data operations section which will give you a runtime file manager to help you check the integrity of your data files a way to erase the sample data that came with the package and a way to erase a single object once you've entered it into the database in case you need to do that so future tutorials are going to show you some of these functions in more detail the best way to learn how to use the software is to download it and give it a try read the help file play with it so thanks for watching this tutorial and check the website for future tutorials that will help you understand how the software works